can I ask you, you know, we're, we're very focused on event risk at the moment. Um, and we are obviously just a couple of weeks away from the US election. Uh, just give us an updated view. How, how are you and the board over at Standard Chartered looking at how you prepare for a shift politically in the United States? And how, how much likelihood do you give that? Well, good morning and, and um, thank you. Um, the United States election is going to change some things, but it's not going to change everything or everything overnight. We, of course, do uh, contingency planning. We look at different scenarios and um, we uh, retain our agility to adjust depending on circumstances. I think that the outcome of the U.S. elections is going to be very important, uh, both for the United States and for the world, uh, either in terms of continuity of the present policies or a change. And if there is change, we are uh, ready to um, uh, you know, do our best in the circumstances. And if there is continuity as, continuity as well. Um, if there is change, I think that on the fiscal side, the United States is going to have a bigger fiscal stimulus that's going to be uh, positive uh, in the short term for the U.S. economy and over the long term, as long as that uh, increase in spending focuses on the basic infrastructures, health, uh, greening the economy. I think that's going to be uh, very important, education as well. So that's a short term and a medium term positive. What's good for United States growth is good for the rest of the world's growth, and that's good for our markets. Um, and also, if um, if there is a more multilateral approach that the United States takes, that's also going to be uh, good, I think, for uh, the world, uh, because we're going to uh, underpin more cooperation. And I think cooperation between the United States and the rest of the world, even in tackling things like China, China issues, I think is going to be a net positive. Jose, you are in uh, Madrid, uh, and we know that um, the regional government in Madrid has been unhappy about the lockdown requirements imposed from the central government. Now, Pedro Sanchez is under fire yet again, and we're going to see a debate kicked off today, I think, about a no-confidence motion in the government. To what extent do you think what is happening in Spain, as it represents perhaps a um, an example of broader discontent politically around COVID in the rest of Europe is setting back the prospects for Eurozone recovery at this stage. Well, thank you. Momentarily, I'm in Madrid. All the times so I'm in London, and I have a very good side of what's happening on both places. And I think that issues are not too dissimilar. Uh, I think that there is, uh, you know, uh, Western governments have not been as successful as we would have liked in controlling the pandemic, also because this is a very hard thing to do. And there is this content. There is this content because uh, as time goes by, there is a second wave. And there are also tensions between uh, local governments or municipal governments and, um, and the state, the central state, in terms of the measures that need to be taken. I think that uh, national governments are trying to avoid like the plague, anything that looks like another national uh, lockdown, and they're trying to pursue measures which are uh, partial uh, and see if they work. And that leads to a lot of tensions because you have local confinements, what support is needed economically in order to make those local confinements viable. That is something which is important. And then there is a broader politics beyond that. And it's a pity that politics sometimes get in the middle of what's the main objective, which is uh, trying to do our best in order to foster the health of the citizens. Jose, I think that's absolutely fascinating what you said, but regardless of the politics of individual countries or their relationship with each other, what we are seeing is every single government on this planet, pretty much from China to the United States, across Europe and beyond, raising vast amounts of money, companies raising vast amounts of money, municipalities and individuals doing the same as well. Do you have concerns about the ramifications for this debt explosion? Well, I think that this uh, is a consequence of the very abundant liquidity that exists worldwide. I think that the support that central banks and fiscal authorities have been providing uh, over the last few months has been really fundamental 
to avoid uh, that the Great Recession becomes another Great Depression. So I think that's 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 really that's really critical. But uh, it is true that this is leading to an increase in debt. The thing is whether this increase in debt is going to be sustainable as the economy recovers and interest rates remain low. And that's an issue not only for the private sector, but also for the public sector. And we'll have to see. But if we can uh, relaunch growth in a sustained manner, and if interest rates, as it seems to be the case, remain low for a long period of time, I think that would help uh, debt uh, uh, to be sustainable. And the authorities will have to do their best also through their financial stability policies to uh, be vigilant and ensure that's the case.